49% of Atlantic Canadians use social media every day. You're not important enough to start the conversation every time. Sometimes you are. Sometimes you'll have that idea that is just sort of... It's actually just a place where we come to connect with each other. 58% or more have two computers in the home. 42% of homes are networked. Fifteen years ago, the Community Access, or CAP program, had one goal. That was to make Canada the most connected country in the world. In eight years, you know, we've more than doubled the number of Canadians online. Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook are now mainstream media channels. One, two, three. Facebook! In Finland, internet access has been declared a right. In Halifax, things are going the other way. One in four have no home internet access. One in five, no access at all. My name's William Shears, and this is where I live. And this is area called Shires Point, Moose Head. Since 1995, 3,000 CAP sites were established across Canada with seed funding from the government to help bridge the digital divide. From here to the CAP site in Moose River is approximately two miles. We cannot get computer service here on the old telephone line, neither can we use uh, cell phones in Moe's River area. These things don't work. So the cap site then becomes the number one access to the outside world. I'm retired now, so I spend from Monday till Friday, and I usually come here maybe half past nine till one o'clock. Although Nova Scotia recently announced 100% broadband coverage, many people still rely on public access computers and internet. It would be naive for us to assume that if internet access is widely available, everybody will start using it. People don't know where to go. Most people that um, need to learn things are sort of aimlessly drifting. They rely on their, their network of contacts. We have this computer uh, lab that people could come to. But what else did we need? In the next 12 to 24 months, technology will change an equivalent of what it did in the last 15 years. Are we ready? And do your communities have the resources? Of the 40 CAP sites in the Halifax Regional Municipality, some are run independently by volunteers, some are partially sustained by a supporting partner, and some are managed by libraries. My name is Barb Allen. This video is a journey to nine of those sites and a look at the digital divides they were meant to overcome. I have to open up the CAP site in the mornings and all the necessary things, get the computers working, get the daily schedule set up. So I had never been working with computers before and uh, all of a sudden I realized it was a good source for me because I'm a researcher at heart and I'm an amateur geologist also a theological student and philosopher, and I'd studied and had a, uh, received a degree. And so I had uh, an opportunity to teach. I had an opportunity to help people who are looking for information. Morning, William. Good morning. How are you, Okay. Dave? I'm Dennis Sharp, and I'm part of the crew of the Mosier River Cap site. We've been in uh, business since 2001. And there's a group of about five of us when we finally started out here. I've got an announcement for your events page, Dave. Was oh, that for the Historical Society? What, what was the date for that? We've had a lot of, uh, of help down through the years, and we've tried to provide help. Hello. Hi, good morning, Jesse. Hello. What would you like this morning? Well, I'd like to have my birth certificate copied computer training, emails, faxes, and uh, photocopies. Most anything, we, we try to be kind of a contact point uh, for the people, for the villages here. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, that'll be a dime, Jesse. This is strictly a volunteer organization. We, we, we have no funding for hiring people except perhaps the summer students in the summer. I need something done, I'll come again. In Nova Scotia, the sites are hosted by community groups and non-profit organizations who still receive a small amount of money each year to help sustain the CAP sites. When it comes to our funding, right now, in a year, we get $2,700 approximately from the government. 
to run the site. For this room here we pay about 2000 The problem with this particular room is that when you uh, deal with Canada Post you have to have insurance. So that's another six or seven hundred. And, and your telephone. We're classed as a, a business so at that you pay fifty dollars. So that's around six hundred. Uh, it works out that we're really going in the hole. Now I'm just in my first session of chemotherapy and I'm just learning about cancer and that's why this capsite is very important to me yeah. to come for any information. Yeah. It's vital to me. It, it's pretty iffy a lot of the times. Really, uh, there will be some time that if the rent keeps going up, uh, we, we, we won't be here. <laughs> Yeah, in the early 1990s, uh, Lindsay, my husband, got a, a computer and I wasn't at all interested. I soon learned that having a computer was very valuable, especially when it came to uh, communicating. And then around the mid-90s, CAP, the CAP program, Community Access Program, came along. And a group of volunteers stepped forward and put an application in and were approved and we were able to, to uh, open the Terence Bay and Area Cap site. It was quite a day, I remember, in 1998, October the 1st, we opened the doors. And so I think over, over the years, over the 10 years from 98 until 2008, we probably raised in the, in the realm of a million dollars in funding and created about 100 jobs. Here we are. Seeing how the Mosier River site struggles to stay open really clarified how lucky we've been in Terence Bay to have been able to build so many partnerships which allowed us to pay employees and manage new projects. And all that project funding was leveraged using the small bit of yearly cap funding we got. One of the biggest uh, projects, and that's what I'm, I've come to work on today, is to do with the community centre. And it's, it's really a, an incredible step because the Resource Opportunity Centre is going to be the volunteer management board for this brand new facility, so that's pretty exciting. There's a, obviously a satellite cap site there too, so uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to that happening. My name is Jason Bungie and I work for the Resource Opportunity Centre, which hosts the cap site. Our users are mostly uh, young children and seniors. The digitally left behind, senior citizens, the fastest growing segment of our population, uh, people on social assistance, disability, lower income, illness, and the unemployed. Some of the most interesting projects that uh, we've done here is definitely the web portal, which connects uh, the communities of Goodwood to Westover on the web. It has 500 plus users. It actually gets over a million hits a year. We play a role of providing technical support as well as basic access and everything from faxing, photocopying to web design. Oh, that's great. Uh, but now it seems as people have adopted technology, the technology that we now offer is kind of out of date. So in a way, if, you, if they talk about the digital divide, cap sites are now kind of part of the digital divide because uh, they haven't been they haven't received enough funding to keep up with technology. The very first, the fundamental digital divide is access to the infrastructure. So access to a computer, to the lines that give you the internet, and it's purely an infrastructure-based digital divide. Fifteen years ago, that was the only digital divide that we knew. That's what we were fighting. The digital divide in Nova Scotia is basically three parts. Um, money, can you afford internet access? knowledge, do you know what to do with it, and uh, the type of access or location, things taking too long. There are knowledge gaps between computer literate people and network literate people. There are knowledge gaps between people who are only an end level user or people who will create and modify content. Yes, I definitely feel there's a uh, need for public access because those people who have been behind in the beginning and haven't adopted technology are getting further and further and further behind every day uh, as technology moves forward. Okay, so we're going to go to File and Import. The meaning of CAP has changed for me over the years because in the beginning it was an innovative uh, new technology that not a lot of people had access to. 
Um, so providing basic access and that level of technology was very important. Uh, but now it seems as everything has progressed so quickly, uh, the meaning of CAP is still uh, back here while technology is up here. We're at the CAP site in Sheet Harbor. We're located in, it's called the Blue Water Building, but it's, I think it used to be an old school. And we're lucky because it has a whole bunch of resources for the area as well in the building. I'm Carly, I'm 15. Um, I've probably been using a computer, not the internet, but just computers in general, probably since I was about six, seven, around there. We serve from Ecomsecum to Eship Harbor, and then inland to Upper Muscadab and Mooseland areas. So a lot of people come here to do things because A, they don't have a computer at home, or B, they get frustrated because they just have dial-up. My name is Maureen Strickland, and I'm the senior employment specialist here as well as the case manager. This CAP site is in a partnership with Job Search Services. So people can come here and do their resumes and cover letters. We put up job postings. We try to make relationships in the community so employers can come here and look for people. We run workshops and interview skills, online job searching, etc. There's not many jobs around here, but we're trying. Right now I'm applying for a job at a campground that we have, but there's also jobs at Foodland and you can get a job here at the CAP site, or there's also the Irving and Esso garages. I like computers because it helps me keep in contact with like some of my friends that don't live around here, and it's just an easier way to get out like what you want to say. Our friend just died and we're planning a memorial service for him for this Friday and we had to get it out somehow so we're using Facebook and we're using MSN and all that to get it out to everyone. I'm at the CAP site because I use the computers for my business. I'm Ann Hedges. I'm the Smiley's Point seamstress. My business is sewing. I use the internet to order fabrics online. Most of them, it's a lot cheaper. Um, I use the computers to organize my file folders to help check my email, to make up posters that I post within the local areas on the bulletin boards, to advertise my business and my sewing classes. And I took a computer course through the CAP site because I didn't know anything about the internet before I came here. So we have a lot of other resources for the community, like people can come in here and sign out digital cameras, uh, overhead projectors, they can get things laminated, they can get reports bound. We have a color copier, a black and white copier, scanners, printers, photocopier. So this is a very high-end cap site based on the ones I've seen. Maureen, can you come help me? So what you're going to have to do is do a Google search to find that page. But I think so, that the fact that we have the job search services supports this CAP site being able to be open. So the rent for job search services pays the rent for the CAP site. There's two of us employed here, and we kind of oversee the CAP site as volunteers. And without us being here, an actual group of volunteers would have to run the CAP site. I usually access it from the Sheet Harbor webpage. Okay, but I think we can find it. We partner with the library as well. <laughs> okay. We get our so, signal from the library, and we also are able to use their programming room, and we run workshops um, and things. So there's a lot of partnerships going on with how the services in this CAP site are delivered to the community. With the library, they have uh, computers the as well. But their hours are less, um, and they're often open in the evenings. So we're Monday to Friday, 9 to 4. Certainly for the younger people in the community, you know, they flood in here at 3 o'clock, closes at 4. You know, if we had volunteers who could continue the hours, then a lot of other things could happen. And then you could sort of start hooking into um, sort of advanced ideas about social media and networking and, you know, digital photography and online video editing and all this kind of stuff that, you know, a lot of younger people are interested in. In my experience with CAP sites over the years, when it first started out, it was very much, I need to go to the CAP site to type my cover letter. It's very much, you know, using the word programs. 
now the majority, especially of young people that come in, and actually everybody really, um, they're using it for Facebook and MSN chatting. It's much more about connecting with people, the social media angle of things. Um, and because of that, I was putting off joining Facebook myself for years, but I broke down and I joined as well. So earlier when you guys were out shooting, I asked you to be my friend on Facebook. Well, I certainly will do. <laughs> Thank you. I think that if other CAP sites were able to develop the kind of partnerships that we've been able to develop here between JSS and CAP, it's going to give them more resources, human and financial, to obviously be able to stay open, but also to grow and deliver more services to their communities. Imagine if all the CAP sites had strong partner organisations that would sustain them and a good balance of paid staff and volunteers. On the way home, I wanted to stop by a CAP site in Jadur that I remembered, called Centre by the Sea. I knew it was probably too late to find anyone there, but I thought I might get a sense of whether it was still open or not. Centre by the Sea was a small CAP site run by a group of volunteers in an old school. Of the 72 CAP sites that existed in HRM in 2003, almost half have since closed, mostly due to volunteer burnout. It was interesting to see how the Sheet Harbour CAP site was sustained through the Job Search Services project and its partnership with the library. Now we're heading to a library CAP site with a different partnership model. The Tantalan Library is part of the St. Margaret's Bay area, which is a growing suburban community. Um, a lot of young families here, a lot of commuters. My name's Elaine Murray, and I'm the branch manager, and I'm also the vice chair of the Hubbard's Tantalan CAP board. So there are four different um, sites that the board oversees. So the J.D. Shatford Public Library is another part of the CAP site, so that's in Hubbard's. The Aspatagan Heritage Trust uh, Centre has uh, two computers in there, and that's in Hubbard's. And then the fourth site is down in Blanford. That's been a, a kind of an adventure for us at the deck. Uh, which is a convenience store and a little restaurant. And so having uh, the Tantalan Library and the Hubbard's Library as part of our board really provides us with a stability that we wouldn't have um, uh, without them, um, as well as the in-kind contribution that they give us for technical support and staff who help people on the computers whenever the library is open. So I think that that is one of the real benefits of our particular CAP board is we have this, you know, small sites and large sites all clumped together under one board. Next step then is to get that printer. And what about high speed internet? I understand that Eastlink is now down there. Is well, that right? Well, yes and no. Okay. It seems That's to right. depend on who you are and oh. where you are. It, it's very spotty. You know, and I, I turn on the news and hear yeah. that, yeah, it's yeah. available everywhere. Yeah. And, and I, that's well, not so. and it's not so. No. Very frustrating. Yeah. Now, around the world, a global digital divide is taking shape. We've seen experts, we've seen blogs refer to Canada as the digital third world. If we don't get our act together in Canada, we're, well, we are being left behind right now in terms of the the bandwidth that people are going to need in order to be able to participate. If you have dial-up right now, and many people still do, you can't listen to internet radio, you, can, you can't participate in many, many ways, and what is unfortunate is that you are constantly bombarded with, with suggestions that this is the way you should participate, go to our website even though it might be available all the way down the peninsula eventually, mm -hmm. that's not to say that everybody's going to buy it. No, of course not. No. Okay. I'm Sally Langell. I'm the chair of the Hubbard's Tent Helen Cap Board, and now I'm off to check out laser printers. 
I did a, a, an analysis of our usage last year, and um, we had over 23,000 computer usages uh, within our Harvard's Tentalon cap site. Um, a good chunk of them were here at Tantalum because we've got so many computers here. But one of the stats that really blew me away was the deck, where we have one computer, and yet that year, last year, 2009, uh, we had over 3,000 uses on that one computer. And for me, all of those uses demonstrate that these are resumes that wouldn't have been written. They are emails that wouldn't have been sent. They are searches on the internet that wouldn't have happened if we didn't have those public use computers. My name is Azor. I live just down the road here at Lewis Lake. I retired in 1991. This was a wonderful place and filled a, a hole in my time. Uh, I have a computer at home, but I don't have internet. And I don't want internet, any internet at home because I waste all my time on the computer. I wouldn't get anything done. So I come here and do my email. Strangely, uh, I can't imagine what my life would have been without the computer. And it allows me to be in touch with so many friends and uh, do so many things that I could never have done before. It's like a friend to me. I know that. Uh, the cost of technology is coming down, that it doesn't cost so much to, to buy a computer now, but it still costs money to have monthly hookup to the high-speed internet, and there are a lot of people for that just can't afford that. And given that a lot of government documents are only available online, we have to provide places for people to have access to computers. And if they don't have them in their homes, they need a place to come. As Capsites struggled to provide access to everyone, creating innovative partnerships and relying on committed volunteers to stay open, the Canadian government decided, while we were filming this video, to drastically cut CAP funding across the country and then to reinstate it again, all in the same day. Is the CBC News for Nova Scotia. Good evening. I'm Ryan Pierce. This morning, people who operate CAP sites across Nova Scotia were getting ready to close them. Industry Canada had given notice that it would no longer fund sites within 25 kilometers of a library. Then this afternoon, Industry Minister Tony Clement told reporters the whole thing was a misunderstanding. Wow. And he now says all CAP sites that offer free computer and internet access will be fully funded for the upcoming year. Did you hear that? The Wadmacook Band Council says it's That's cautiously optimistic about these. I guess fully funded means the paltry $2,500 each site gets every year. If the cuts had been made, the library sites and the smaller sites they support would have lost all of their funding, as would 38 of the 40 sites in HRM, including this CAP site, which is still open, but not exactly open for business today. I'm Sharon Dykeman, and you are at the CAP site in Lake Echo at the Lake Echo Lions Community Centre. Uh, I'm not doing too good this morning. I, uh, yeah, more problems. What <laughs> you're supposed to do um, when you first come I into a CAP is turn all, on all of the computers, and it makes it more pleasing for when people come in. So when I did that this morning, I would have it ready. I found only one computer was up and operating properly. So I was a little amazed when Linda walked in this morning to use the computers and uh, I suggested that she sit down at the one that she's at right now and to turn it on, she had no access to internet. It tells me it cannot find the server. Is, is, the server. is the server that new piece of equipment we installed? <laughs> in the late 90s there were a group of women who formed a community board because they felt that there was a need for computer access here in the community. Uh, we, we live in an area where there's um, a lot of transients and there's also some low income people here. So they, be, uh, they opened it up so that they could be able to use it. And I became involved in the early 2000s and have been here ever since. I, I worked with the uh, CAP people and then I became a volunteer with them. So over the years it's had many ups and downs and at one time we received enough funding in order to maintain the room here and equipment and we had people for technical support and so on. But I found over the last few years our funding has dropped and we are now in a position where I can't pay rent here. So we do like in-kind services. I offer 
uh, internet service to the building. And that helps defray the cost of rent. Hey, Sharon. Hi, how are you? Not too bad. No, Mike, glad to see you. I can probably see why. Uh-huh. We're not all the same color today. No, we're not. We're feeling a little blue. I came in this morning, and this came up telling me I was in Word 2000. That was XP, and this is our normal. I can't get an internet, and I'm really frustrated. It's the only screen that came up. My name is Dan Robichaud, and I am the executive director of the Halifax Regional Cap Association, and I've been fighting the digital divide for four years. I don't know if this has anything to do with the, uh, the new program that we installed. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. In Lake Echo, we've installed a server, which has allowed us to give uh, five years more life to the already 10-year-old computers. The operating system is not on the computers at all. It's actually on a server, which is, in this case, located in, in Lake Echo. We wanted to revitalize CAP in that area, and we thought that bringing new technology and a very strong open source initiative in Lake Echo um, was just good timing. So what happens if you restart this? I restarted one of the computers. Because Certainly it's not limited to Lake Echo. Right now we're still piloting the project in Lake Echo. We are still using old computers as terminals. And the second phase, like I said, will be to use uh, low energy terminals, um, which are very, very small in size. At only one watt of electrical consumption, it's the, it's the greenest one that we could find. While these larger initiatives are being developed, most of the sites are more concerned with being able to keep their doors open and their computers in working order. On the plus side, here in the center, we have a senior citizen group that meets periodically. And at our last meeting, we had the IT Works Group come in to explain to the seniors about a program they were opening here in our CAP site. And it included like GED programs or women trying to get back into the working force, that they would offer free computer training free GED programs. Just like our funding. IT Works for Women is a program facilitated by a society promoting women's economic equality. This popular program has used many CAP sites in HRM to train over a thousand women in the use of information technology. Access to computers and the internet is definitely not just a rural issue. In the urban areas, there are more than 20 CAP sites Five of them are within blocks of each other in the north end of Halifax. In this community, I would say definitely not most people are connected at home. With these kids, maybe 60% have computers at home, maybe 75% of them have internet at home. So there's definitely a divide. It's a priority thing. It's, you know, when you have to choose, even if you have a computer, I mean, the cheapest internet I've looked at for my own self is $40, $45 a month, unless you want to get it in a bundle and pay another $110 a month for all your services. It's not feasible. When people are fighting to find food and they're trying to make rent. My name is Adriana McKenzie and I'm the Executive Director of St. George's Youth Net. We run lunch and after school programs for children in the north end of Halifax. Um, our after school program has about 25 kids a day on average and the capsite is a core component of the after-school program, so it's something the kids use every day. Uh, the bulk of the children arrive at 310, and we sit in the circle and the kids sign up for what they want to do for that day. Early dodgeball and late capsite? Great. So capsite, there's always an early capsite and a late capsite option. We currently have five working capsite computers. Previously we've had seven. We have two that are under the weather right now, if you want to call it that. Uh, and so the children sign up for those capsite times, and once their capsite time is finished, they switch and another group of kids get to go on it. I would like early dodgeball and late capsite. So early 10 kids dodgeball. every day get to go on a capsite. Well. Okay, late capsite is full. Mostly they play games. They love games, they love race car games, they love swinging from the air games. Some of those games, they'll each be on a different computer and be playing against each other. 
The older kids like to play on Facebook, Farmville. Well, the other thing they love is YouTube. And they love to watch videos and music on YouTube. My name is Holly. I'm in grade five, and I come in here sometimes because most of the time I I love music and like I sing every day. So I usually go on YouTube and stuff like that. A lot of adults tend to think that uh, children playing on games is a, is a waste of their time and they should be outside, they shouldn't be in front of a computer or a TV and you know although I'm a firm believer that children should absolutely be outside and doing lots of things, uh, what I see here is kids interacting with each other in a really positive way while they're on the computers so helping each other out when they can't find a game or teaching each other how to play a game. Yeah the shark game. Oh, he this game. At the after school program, I like Capside the most because you get to play computer games. I have a computer at home, but my parents use it, so I, I don't get that much time. My name is Laura Bartlett, and I'm the program director at St. George's Youth Net. I think it's really important that we do continue to have a cap site. We're stones throw away from, from a library. But the thing is, is that the library, their computers are not going to accommodate all of these families. And all of these kids don't necessarily, the library isn't somewhere that they feel an attachment to. Can you go to St. George's Youth Net? They know what the expectation is. They know if they don't get on today, they're definitely getting on tomorrow. They know that they, there's lots of adults around here that can help them find things. Kids pick up things very quickly, so they can learn things on the computer extremely fast. But certainly when I've had conversations with parents, a lot of times the parents don't have those skills. The parents don't know how to do those things or get them on those programs. Um, and they don't necessarily ha know how to, you know, be engaged with their kid in those processes, you know, which I think is really important. So it's not just about, here, have a computer by yourself, but sit with your kid, you know, and be and have that as a kind of social time for you and your child. And unfortunately, I don't think a lot of parents know how to do that or how to make that work. You know, how do I play Farmville maybe with my child on Facebook at the same time? Just to kind of join their world a little bit. The biggest challenge that we have is just maintaining the computers. So like I said, two of them currently aren't working properly and finding, you know, it, it tends to be quite expensive to continuously be paying somebody to come in and fix the computer. So $40 an hour doesn't get you much time. Um, so we use our funding uh, primarily for the internet connection that we have for the computers um, and maintaining and buying things for the computers as we need them. So uh, I think last year we spent probably almost $2,000 just maintaining them and getting them up and running. Because, I mean, we're pretty committed to it at this point. I, I can't imagine coming to work and saying to the kids, sorry, no capsite anymore. In my fantasy world, in my ideal world, we would have at least seven working computers. We would have staff here with training to do other things on those computers besides just gaming and video watching. So things like geocaching, you know, so connecting them to places on the internet where they can then go look for things in the real world. So connecting the outside to the inside. Movie making, you know, one of my dreams is to actually get, you know, either an iMac or, you know, some sort of computer that works really well with that kind of digital uh, media and have the kids making their own movies and doing that sort of stuff. But all of that is about having the people here who know how to do it, who know how to teach children how to do it, because those are two different things. Um, and, you know, having the resources to have those computers with the right programs, with everything that they need, essentially, to, to run those things.
The North End is by no means the only part of the city where people rely on cap sites. Morning. I'm Barb Allen. I'm here to see the cap site. Yes, I'm Anne Elliot Tomlinson. I am. And this is Jim Clancy. This is an activity center on Morris Street, which is for seniors. And uh, there's quite a few activities going on here. We have a cap site, which is used by the seniors. It's a great place to come. This is where I learned to use the computer. I've been coming here a long time perhaps 15 years, and uh, uh, this was my first experience uh, when the CAP site started. I have had a few lessons, so now uh, I've bought a computer. It's a wonderful, wonderful way of communicating. Good morning, Jim. Hi, Alan. How are you? Hi. Good. You got me set up here? Yep. My name is Ivan McPherson. I come down here about uh, four days a week. Okay. Capsite is very handy because there's anything I've forgotten or so forth. On my computer at home, I can get a little help and get it all done here. I'm 95 years old and I hope to keep on going for quite a while coming down here. At least three or four days a week. I need you to help set me up here. Okay, sure, yeah. Uh, 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 what's your uh, profile? Can you get uh, lotto numbers on? Uh, oh, sure, yeah, you want uh, that? Sure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, there it is. 649. Wait till it comes up again. This is a, a, a portfolio book that we put together, and um, this is the life story, or a short life story, of, um, of seniors. As you can see, this is a picture of myself, and a little about my life history. What is really remarkable about this book, it, it has been done with the computer, the photography, and also um, the, the, all the writing and everything was produced by the, by the computers. And uh, I think we all enjoyed doing it very much. My name is Deborah Dostel and I'm the Executive Director of Spencer Health Senior Center. And I started here in 19, uh, 1993. And when I came, there was no computer at all. So the, one of the first things I did was go to the board and say, I need a computer. Well, some of the board members thought, mm, you know, what do you need a computer for? But, but I finally convinced them that really, you know, we really should, you know, come up and uh, embrace the new technology. So uh, I got one computer. But the CAP site actually was started in 95, and we were one of the first sites. Our main focus was, of course, on seniors, teaching seniors computers. And it's amazing how a lot of them were, were really scared at the first. You know, they just didn't want to touch a computer. They were afraid they were going to wreck it. But we had uh, some good instructors at that time, some volunteers. Anyway, as, uh, many of them, as they got more um, knowledgeable about computers and learned how to uh, use the Internet and go do email, became, you know, computer whizzes. Annie. <laughs> yes. How are you, dear? Oh, I'm What did you think and feel about the federal government's announcements when they were going to cut the program for CAP? I was quite shocked. I, I, I certainly felt that they should have given us much more notice than that. I mean, you know, just to give us like one month is, is uh, just horrible. I mean, it, uh, uh, and, and it's such a worthwhile program. It doesn't cost much. It didn't. I didn't understand why they they wanted to cut it. I, it. Uh, it, 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 they're getting the bang for their buck because of places like this where we're putting you know, a lot of energy and effort and, uh, and resources into the CAP site um, to keep it going. Well, good luck, we hear. <laughs> Not only has, has it helped uh, seniors kind of get up to speed on uh, computers, but it's brought in a lot of people from the community. Um, 
a lot of new people and, and it's, it's open to all ages so we have young people uh, as well coming in. But the campsite has been one of the best things that happened to Spencer House, it really has. Just down the road, there's another campsite that attracts a wide variety of users. My name is Cecil. I uh, come here to use uh, Facebook. Um, I have three kids in BC, so I send them, write them letters and send messages. Hello. How are you doing today? Good. What a beautiful day outside, eh? It is. I come probably every day, except for Sunday. It's closed. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, no, I come every day for at least an hour to two hours. I come here because I don't have my own computer. So by the time I bought my own computer and then set up with the internet, it would cost quite a bit. So it's nice that they have the, uh, these computers here. I'm Lauren Ustavine. I'm a project coordinator here at the archives. Oh, we actually have another few stations upstairs, about I think four other computers where researchers who are coming to the third floor to look at family history, local history, that sort of thing, can go on there and uh, explore our website, explore our genealogy website. So those are also very busy. I live at a recovery house uh, up the street here. It holds 13 uh, adult males. It's a safe place for me now because I am an alcoholic and, uh, you know, uh, I live there to try to, uh, uh, you know, uh, get control of my life, I guess you would say. Um, so this is very nice to come, be able to take time away from the house to come here. Do other people that live in the house also use this capsite? Yes, yeah. uh, because once I found out about it, I, I suggested it to them. And now, the next thing you know, it, all the computers are being used, so sometimes I have to wait. So I'm kind of kicking my, you know, I'm kind of mad at myself for telling everyone, <laughs> you know. The last site we visited was the one that really brought home the fact that cap sites are about a lot more than just technology. Feet House is a not-for-profit multi-service organization. It's located in the north end of Halifax. Our CAP site has a wide range of users, from young kids, youth. Um, we have people, adults, who come in and use the site. Um, there's some people who are regular. Petrina comes here every Friday. And I believe that her coming here consistently with us supporting her has made a real difference in her life. My name's Noreen Richard and we're at Veith House and I'm the coordinator of the Veith House CAP site. Good morning, Katrina. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, not too bad. Feeling yeah. good. What are you going to do in the CAP site today? Uh, what am I going to do? Try to get some meal meals to a voter store, a poem. How's your book coming together? The, uh, Adam books doing fine. I'm almost finished yet. Okay. I'm Katrina Vita Tremonica. Instead of being called mentally ill, I would like to be called a writer, because that's what I am. See you later. What difference has it made in your life to be able to come to Veith House and use the CAP site? Some friends are there, some place to go, some place to uh, progress. Um, somewhere I hope that people will help me here with the rest of my poems, and stories, and novels revise them all and maybe get them sold. What means the most to me here is that the people upstairs were talking to each other, we were friends. I've come here for 12 years, so I know, I know Noreen, I know Shelley. There's some way to get frustration out too with the computer, uh, typing out the poems. She's crazy, lock the girl up. She is insane. She's laughing and for her illness, getting worse. The Canadian system she blames. Drug her up and don't let her explain her life. To you, the system is nothing but a game. I don't know how to do without the cap site. Um, I'm getting all my poems done and maybe I get all my stories out. 
and expressing myself, let myself talk about what I want to talk about in life so I can get out of myself and hope I can live a good life, the rest of it. She's in middle age now, never had a productive normal life. How she worked for free and the system, but people she does forgive. So just let her be. No, it doesn't want to work today. Oh, no. I can uh, try it on my laptop. Okay. How's it going, Petrina? Okay. I was just trying to print, and uh, I'm going to try it one more time. It doesn't seem to be working here. Did it have the main computer on? So about 10 years ago, we had a community meeting and we formed a committee and we got money, you know, to start it up and it was a really exciting time. But the reality is, is that the, the money that has come through the CAP Association has really went down to where it's almost impossible to run the CAP site. We couldn't run the CAP site without Feath House. <laughs> Ethos subsidizes it. Um, my time is spent in recruiting whoever I can get to come in and support different people. The CAP site has really become part of Vethos as a whole. Vethos has its, has its mission to work with people who live in poverty. And, um, you know, so the Petrinas of the world can come here when we provide service uh, free. Um, as much as we can. The CAP site, you know, I think when it first, when we first started it, it was the biggest excitement was that, oh, we're going to have computers, people are going to have computers, and I think the staff were, oh, we're going to have internet throughout the whole house, <laughs> and that was exciting, but really, you know, after all these years, really what the program is about is about people supporting people, and so, you know, even though, um, People come in to use the computer maybe to do a document for court. Really, that's not the work and the support that goes on. The support really is in what it takes to do that document. The talking it through, the listening to people, to just be present. Um, I can print it in my office if you want. Sure, that would be great. If money wasn't an obstacle, is there anything that you could think of that would make the Veith House cap site better? Um, no. 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 Yeah, we're trying to hear your poem. There's a lot to celebrate Sorry, about working. what cap sites have accomplished Sorry, over the past 15 years. But are they realising their full potential? The Community Access Programme started as an on-ramp to the Information Highway. As this highway becomes increasingly complex and vital to so many aspects of our lives, the CAP program seems more important than ever. In 10 years from now, I would say that uh, CAP still needs to be in existence. We still need to be providing people with um, access to computers. We need community centres where you can keep up with the technology. And those will always need to be there. Well, they use the term digital divide and it, it isn't necessarily between rural and urban. It has to do with being able to, uh, to know how to use the technology that's evolving so quickly. The need for CAP may have changed from the basic access to technology to the actual more demanding focus around how do you use the technology to meet real needs. One of my visions I see is, is possibly more networking, more exchange of ideas and technologies between sites. We have an obligation to teach the moral and ethical use of that technology. If we have a website and I maintain that, I would love to have a computer where the kids could maintain a section of that website for themselves. It's always been funded by Industry Canada, so it's embedded in a technology world, and yet, in many ways, it's a community and social development initiative as much as it is a technology initiative. What has to happen is that the volunteers have to be recognized for what they've contributed all the way along. The burden of the responsibility to keep most of the CAP sites open 
definitely falls on community members. Is good sometimes, but, it's not good all but whose responsibility so is it, ultimately, that people have access to the internet and the means to fully participate in this evolving digital economy and socially networked world? The facilities that currently have cab sites, a very few of them have the intention of stopping to provide computer labs for public access. We've moved on as society, and it's no longer a question of arguing whether the internet is a frill. Um, it's what you do to remain competitive in the knowledge economy, period. If community ownership and volunteer commitment are two of the cornerstones of the CAP initiative, what other elements are needed to create a solid foundation in order to allow the program to grow? Let's build on the past to imagine a future where CAP becomes a recognized leader in ensuring that all Canadians have the opportunity to be active citizens in this digital age. I'm Erica Butler, I work at CKDU and we're a CAP site. My name's Ryan Deschamps, I work for the Halifax Public Hi, Libraries. I'm a volunteer at the Moser River CAP site. I'm with the Fucked Up Community. I'm Karen Pariso, um, I've been working uh, with the province for the Community Access Program since 1997. I'm Lauren Oostabine, I'm with the Nova Scotia Archives, which is a very busy uh, CAP Kathy site. Kathy Burgess, I'm with the Coal Harbour CAP site. Hi, I'm Alan Clay with the Beaver Bank CAP site. I'm just trying to find out what's going on. 50% of my day is spent fixing computers. I'm Sam Rattama. Um, uh, facility manager for the East Preston Recreation. And I'm Brenda Brooks, and I'm a uh, CAP site uh, representative for the East Preston Baptist Church CAP site.